Welcome to the Trades and Apprenticeship presentation at Big Info Home Edition. I'm Tamara Pongrass, Department Head of the Trades Access Group and a trade, proud trades person. And I'm joining you from home too. So please settle in, get comfortable, and let's get started. Next slide, please. Trades training takes place over four out of five of BCIT's campuses in Burnaby, Delta, Richmond, and North Vancouver. And we recognize that these campuses are located on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish nations of Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam. Next slide, please. Tonight, representatives from the School of Construction and the Environment, School of Energy, and School of Transportation will join us. Each representative will share brief information about the program and course offerings that are housed within each of their schools. We encourage you to gather more in-depth data by attending program-specific information sessions that are regularly scheduled. Visit bcit.ca slash info sessions to book your spot. This presentation will be recorded and available at some point in the near future. If you have any questions, simply um, find the uh, chat button below and type in your question. We have folks from Program Advising online with us to answer your queries. Skilled trades workers contribute to the economic well-being of the province and the country. We construct, maintain buildings and infrastructure. We manufacture goods uh, and we transport both goods and people via air, ground and water. In short, our work is vital to civilization. Trades work provides both pride and a paycheck. Some benefits are in-demand jobs that have been deemed essential during the pandemic and the opportunities are projected to grow. We use cutting edge technology as we carry out our work and our skills are transferable and lead to multiple viable rewarding careers. Our knowledge base ladders well into diplomas and degrees. We offer programs to get you started and courses that will allow you to leverage your expertise onto the next branch of your career. The list of possibilities is endless. So at BCIT, we offer training for people whose work demands attention and due diligence towards safety within a culture of safety. BCIT has comprehensive protocols in place to ensure the health and safety of our students, staff, and visitors. During the pandemic, we've shifted much of our trades training to a blend of online and limited in-person lessons. In some cases, you may participate in several online lessons, followed by in-person practical activities. Your online lessons may be instructor-led or self-paced. And uh, as the previous presentation said, BCIT faculty and staff have made some modifications to some of our shops. And in some cases, we built individual learning stations where each student is provided with their own tools, equipment, and machinery. I've talked with a few students that are currently in trades training and on campus right now, and they said they were really nervous to come in for in-person training. But once they got here and saw all the arrangements that we've made, they said they're feeling pretty safe. Next slide. BCIT trades training programs start continuously. That means that most programs, there may not be just one single application date, but multiple opportunities for you to start your training. There is available availability in some programs starting in the next few months. And I would suggest that you check out um, our um, program availability page. So that's BCIT. .ca admission slash uh, program hyphen availability to see where there might be some programs with them starts right away. Um, as tradespeople, we traditionally earn our credential through apprenticeship training, which is a combination of in-school and at-work sessions. Apprenticeships range in length from one to five years, most being about four. So when it comes to foundation or pre-apprenticeship training, the main reason to complete a foundation is to gain some experience and familiarity with the trade, make it easier for you to find an employer who will sponsor you in an apprenticeship, and completing a foundation 
tells an employer that you have invested some time in yourself to learn the basics of your occupation and to build on this uh, foundation. With apprenticeship, the key is you must have an employer sponsor. You and your employer sponsor will need to have registered with the Industry Training Authority. You'll receive a apprenticeship registration number. This number is needed to register for your training. And some of our BCIT trades training programs are offered as diplomas, where up to four years of technical apprenticeship training has been packaged into a diploma. And the majority of apprenticeable trades will require you to also complete some workplace hours to earn your full apprenticeship credential. We have a few programs at BCIT that are offered as cooperative education. That means that it's apprenticeship content that is alternating with BCIT supervised work experience. Next slide, please. Well, the first step in join, starting your path into a trade is figuring out which one. So if you happen to be on the fence and not sure, or you want to know about one or two, or you want to know even if a trade is meant for you, BCIT offers trades exploration programs. The Trades Discovery Programs are regular college credit programs that, are, that have starts in September, January, and May. We also have a high school partnership program where students that are still in high school can take a trades exploration course at BCIT, all while completing their secondary school credential. For the trade sampler, you have to be registered through your high school career counselor. Next slide, please. It is um, my um, opportunity to welcome representatives from the School of Energy, School of Construction and the Environment, and School of Transportation. Again, if you have any questions while we're um, carrying on this presentation, find your chat button and type it in. And the folks from Program Advising are kindly supporting us by answering questions as we continue on with our presentation. So. If I could please ask Marco Visick from the School of Energy to introduce programs from his sector. Thanks, Marco. Thanks so much, Tamara. Appreciate it. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit hoarse. I've been on this computer talking all afternoon, it sounds like. Um, next slide, please. I am going to start off by expressing... Um, and explaining a little bit about our heating, ventilation, and air conditioning and refrigeration programs. Uh, we have a two-year diploma co-op program in the HVAC and refrigeration program. And I will tell you that this is probably the most popular program that I work with. Um, I know it is um, because there is growth and demand in the industry, like many of the trades. And um, I understand it's a very lucrative program to our industry to get to get into some of the notable careers would be contract contracting firms government agency as well as large hotels and resort chains this program provides a foundation in the hvac systems design installation and service it's designing building maintaining and repairs essential to indoor comfort and cooling systems inclusive of heating ventilation air, and air conditioning we do also have a one-year certificate non-co-op program in this uh, option, and it's really intended for those in the industry or have been employed in trades, customer service, and related fields. Finally, we do have a refrigeration air conditioning mechanic program. This is a foundation program that's 25 weeks long. It provides a Foundation and basic refrigeration system design, installation, and service. And it's really preparing you for an entry level employment in com the commercial refrigeration industry. It is an opportunity to take this entry level position as an apprentice in this field or in related industries. For um, any of these programs, if you are interested in revisiting, we are doing uh, hosting an information session on October the 20th. At 5 p.m., I do encourage you to register for that session. Next slide, please. When I came to the machinists and the CNC machinist programs, I really needed to define 
machinist and CNC machinist and CNC programmer. Machinists really interpreting, engineering, draw, engineered drawings and manufacturing a variety of complex parts using a variety of machinist equipment set up and um, setting up and running computerized lathes, mills and grinders to manufacture specific parts. A CNC programmer applying all of the machining skills to efficiently set up and program automated machinery, quality control inspect, and verify production of parts to ensure they are within to tolerances for size specifications. This really gave me context to these programs. The Machinist program is a foundation program that is 25 weeks long. You'll learn to set up and operate all machine tools such as lathes, milling machines, saws, grinding machines, drilling and boring machines, precision measuring tools, and in power tools. I've had discussions with this industry and they have many positions to fill. Uh, great opportunity. This is a great opportunity to work in the entry level and you can get into that apprenticeship, any apprenticeship opportunity in this industry. The CNC machine program is a two-year diploma program, which does include a co-op term. Um, CNC or computer numerical control is where you design, manufacture, repair components, parts, and tools with a variety of metals and other engineered materials using traditional and state-of-the-art machinery. The careers um, are really supported in various industries in BC, such as forestry, mining, aerospace, automotive, and in medical and research development, and, and even in industrial sales. Uh, it's, it's sort of one of those careers where you're basically needed in almost everything. We are hosting an information session on the machinist and CNC machinist programs on October the 15th at 5 p.m. Millwright often described as masters of all trades, as they're expected to install, maintain, and repair all types of machinery in almost any industry. The training prepares students for entry-level employment as uh, an apprentice in the millwright trade. Basic theory and related information, along with hands-on shop practice, will enable students to become competent in basic millwriting, millwright duties. And those duties include the install, repair, overhaul, and maintain of all types of machinery and heavy mechanical equipment. Um, really, anywhere that machinery exists, uh, there's usually work for a millwright. Uh, employment in mining, pulp mills, wood processing, petrochemical plants, just to give an example a few. This is a 24-week program. And like I had mentioned, uh, apprenticeship, apprenticeship opportunities are available. We are hosting an information session on this program on October the 15th as well, and that will be at 6 p.m. Back-to-back sessions there. Next slide. Industrial instrumentation um, is a two-year diploma program, and it is a program, the only program of its kind in British Columbia. I spoke about this earlier as we do cover these uh, the next few programs in both engineering and in trades, because there is a little bit of a crossover between them both. Um, through theor theoretical and practical study, you'll develop the skills needed to install, maintain, repair, calibrate, and program measurement and control instruments that are applied to industrial manufacturing processes. Um, the hands-on practical training is using equipment that's typically encountered in industry, and I had said this earlier as well, the building that we're set up for uh, training in this is impressive and true to real world. Um, you'll learn to program computerized control, programmable logic controllers, microprocess and uh, instrumentation, as well as install and maintain field instruments um, that these computerized controllers rely on. Um, we will be hosting an information session on this program on October the 19th, and I do encourage you to sign up and uh, visit us on that day. Nope, oh, back one more, sorry. We're still gonna finish up power, power engineering. Um, the power engineering programs provide an in-depth practical and technical knowledge, theory and skill to operate, maintain, and manage industrial plants. 
that are used uh, that use equipment such as boilers and refrigeration units. In every Canadian province and territory, only certified power engineers are permitted to operate such equipment. Um, and again, I'm going to reiterate, the building that we have this set up in for training is impressive and true to real world. Um, the Power and Process Program is a two-year full-time diploma program. It provides the background to take the exams for the interprovincial certification as a third-class power engineer. A caveat to this is that you will have to have uh, three months of qualifying time or work experience to complete this third-class third certification. The Power Engineering Program is a one-year full-time certificate program. It's the same first year as the Power and Process Engineering Program, um, but this gives you the background uh, to take the exams for the interprovincial certification as a fourth-class engineer. For more details, for in-depth detail on this, we are doing an information session on October the 19th at 5 p.m. Next slide. Telecommunications systems technician. Um, when, I, when I say telecommunications, and depending on your age, we really look at it and say, hmm, am I thinking of a landline or I think of a mobile phone? Um, well, it really is a program that covers all of that and more. Um, You'll develop the skills needed to install, maintain, and repair electronic circuits and equipment uh, of all facets of telecommunication systems. Um, the first year is a common year. Um, and in the second year, you're specializing in one of two options. First option is telecommunications network networks. Uh, and it's providing training and current equipment encountered in the wired telecommunications industry. Um, current systems that like what we even have in our homes. Um, examples would be fiber optics, data communications, voice over IP, communications, and telephone switching systems. Second option is radio systems, the radio systems option, and it'll teach you to install, maintain, and repair radio frequencies, uh, telecommunications equipment, and related electronic equipment. Uh, an example would be the communications in emergency vehicles for the ambulance, fire, and police, or even marine communications on boats. And this particular option, uh, the radio systems, is the only program of its kind in British Columbia. Some of the uh, employers that you look at um, for, with, from this program are those that you'll recognize. Shaw, Telus, Rogers, Bell, um, Microsoft, and RCMP. We are hosting an information session next Tuesday, October the 13th, and that will be at 5 p.m. I encourage you to come visit us then. And the final program I'm going to talk to you about is our technology teacher education program. Uh, it is one of my favorite programs. Uh, the diversity that I've seen taught in this program over the years uh, would definitely appeal to many who like to do a variety of trades. Um, this is a two-year diploma program. and and this is the program that enables you to teach technology education in BC's middle and high school system. So yes, I am talking about being a shop teacher in school. <laughs> um, it is a joint program with uh, UBC. It transfers into, the U into UBC for the third year for the academic portion of what you're requiring. Um, it's really an excellent opportunity for those who may want to change from a trade to teaching that trade or teaching into that into the trades. Um, I also believe it's a testament to a pathway for career progression uh, with an education from BCIT. We are hosting an information session on uh, the Technology Teacher Education or TTD program on October the 20th at 6 p.m. Um, thank you. Um, that's all I've got for now. Back to you, Tamara. Thanks, Marco. Um, again, I uh, highly encourage you to participate in a program-specific information session. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Marita Luke from the School of Construction and the Environment. Thanks, Tamara, and good evening, everyone. I'm excited to share with you many construction trades, technical, and apprenticeship programs and more. 
So let's get started. If you are interested in a high paying trade, check out Boilermaker. I didn't even know what it is, but now I do. Boilermakers assemble and install boilers, tanks, and vats that contain liquids or gases, such as oil and other various chemicals. They may also operate machines, such as robotic welders, and they also have a physically demanding job. They work outside in a variety of weather conditions. The training will give you the full range of knowledge and skills required to fit, install, assemble, erect, repair, um, and maintain a wide variety of vessels, tanks, towers, hoists. It's quite an interesting job, as you can see in the photo there. Possible work sites include pulp mills, refineries, and hydroelectric projects. We offer both foundation and apprenticeship boilermaker training. Next, please. A very popular trade is carpentry. When people think of trades, they often think of this program. It is needed almost everywhere. Carpentry, carpenters construct, renovate, and repair residential, civil, institutional, commercial, and industrial structures made of wood, even steel and concrete and other materials. They can work for a wide array of employers, including new home builders and renovation firms, construction firms, building owners, property managers, and tenants, and more. We offer both foundation and apprenticeship options as well for this too. Next, please, thank you. Now, if I had to talk about a popular trade, the most popular trade in our school is electrical. They had like the largest transition from in-person to online training involving 40 instructors, 35 classes in two days. That's over 500 students. It's quite a, a feat. In BC, we offer the leading training in electrical foundation, electrical apprenticeship, industrial electrician, construction electrician, and security systems technician, and more which you'll hear about. And did you know the Electrical Trades Department is the largest, most advanced trades training facility in BC? And they also have an exceptional reputation with industry. I get calls all the time looking for the grads. This department has a lot to be proud of. In fact, in September 2021, we'll be launching a special enhanced curriculum in foundation program to support women interested in a career in electrical. We still have a lot of women um, in our classes, but this is a special one that we're supporting. And great news, we have an info session for electrical foundation on November 25th. It's getting very full but feel free to take a look at it and register. Now on this slide, there's a couple of interesting things, really long titles, the Advanced Certificate in Renewable Energy, Electrical Systems, Installation and Maintenance. Resum for short, it's a real mouthful, but it shows this is a needed, uh, be, uh, needed program because of techno technological advances that have been made in the area of electrical installations for renewable energy. This is the first program of its kind that addresses the need to teach renewable energy sources. You know, programs such as uh, um, so sources such as photovoltaics, geothermal, wind turbines, and more. Now, the other one is called another mouthful. It's called the Advanced Certificate in Automated Controls, Installation, and Maintenance, ASIM for short. This group loves their acronyms. This one builds on the knowledge and skills evolved during an electrician apprenticeship or an engineer's practical training experience. And next slide, part of the electrical trades, we also have the security systems technician certificate. I think we can all agree, the need for security is everywhere. Airports, schools, stores, your home, especially your front door when you're receiving packages from Amazon. More than ever before, people are asking for electronic solutions to help restore peace of mind in an uncertain world. The demand for grads from the Security System Technician or SST has, been never, been, has never been higher. In 28 weeks, you'll be able to program, install, maintain, repair, test equipment uh, for intrusion alarms, camera surveillance, all 
from this program, even entertainment systems. Our security systems program is the first of its kind in North America and continues to occupy a unique position in the security industry. Next slide. Now, when you look around CBC Place and any of the bridges like Petula Bridge or Lionsgate Bridge, you might wonder how, uh, how these incredible structures were built. Chances are there were iron workers involved in this process. From reinforced concrete towers to steel bridges, it is not, it's hard not to observe the day-to-day -day work of an iron worker. Next slide, please. Do you like working with your hands and being creative with wood? Joiners can do more than build cabinets. Joiners may work in a wide variety of specialties such as cabinet making, architectural woodwork, um, furniture making, boat interiors, and store fixture manufacturing. The type of work in each of these areas varies. In some shops, joiners will be required to read blueprints and visualize the item to be built, make detailed drawings and cutting lists for the, for the items and assemble and then apply a finish. In other shops, the individuals may specialize in one or more of these areas. We offer both the foundation and apprenticeship programs. And we also have an info session on November 5th. And next slide. If you enjoy working with steel, aluminum, and other exotic metals, check out metal fabrication. Work in, techno work in a technology technologically advanced, diverse, and team-based shop environment. You'll learn to develop concepts and ideas into the fabricated legacies of the future. You will earn an above average income in a shop or field location. We offer both the foundation and apprenticeship programs. Now, the Marine Fitter was developed in partnership with C-SPAN. It is an industry training authority, ITA, endorsed trade that builds on the foundational trades of metal fabrication and boiler maker. The program prepares apprentices for work in shipyard production, including assembly of ship components such as hull frames and stringers, hatches and covers, decking and deck structures, and cabins. And next slide. Now, this is a trade that I know is close to Tamara's heart. It's the piping trades area. And the piping trades is another busy department. Uh, the Piping Foundation Program prepares students for entry-level employment in the piping trades and apprenticeships are offered in plumbing, gas fitter, sprinkler, sprinkler fitting, slash pipe fitter. By experiencing all four trade specialties, students will be prepared to make an informed decision about which career path best suits them if they decide to pursue a career in the piping trades apprenticeship area. Pl plumbers work with domestic hot and cold water, drainage systems, and hydronic heat systems. Many plumbers hold gas tickets because of the widespread use of natural gas in BC. Next slide. If you're looking for another trade whose grads are in demand, check out sheet metal. This is not a very well-known well -known trade. It consists of a wide variety of areas that you would be employed in. Sheet metal work includes the following, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning in residential, commercial, and industrial settings. Other specialized areas include stainless steel, industrial exhaust systems, architectural work and roofing, being employed in sheet metal can be both challenging and lucrative. You can be working in a shop environment, working on a job site, or both. We offer both the foundation and apprenticeship levels. And ever been fascinated by the idea of joining metal? Next is sheet is the welding department. And interested in having a good paying, portable, practice, practical skill. Learning to weld can open many career doors or add to a trade you have you already have, thereby making you that much more valuable as an employee. Welding, welding is a fabrication process that joins, mater joins materials, usually metals, by causing coalescence. The welding trade is vast, covering areas from structural steel used in high rises and bridges, the shipbuilding industry, mining, pipelines, virtually every industry employs 
the welders. And we offer the foundation level as well as level B, level A, and apprenticeship. We have an info session on November 4th, and that again is another popular one. And next slide. Here is a career you may have not thought of. We are pleased to offer one of the fastest growing career opportunities in the life safety industry as a recognized provider of the CFAA accredited fire alarm technician training program courses. You'll gain a comprehensive understanding of fire alarm systems and the skills required for your success in this industry. We have an info session on November 3rd for this special program. And we also have a construction safety officer or CSO. Yes, next slide, thank you. And the CSO is responsible for ensuring required safety protocols are followed on a work site. A CSO will conduct safety orientation for new workers and give crew talks to keep uh, personnel informed about safety. They will also conduct and document site inspections, site hazard audits, and maintain site safety plans to ensure that work being done on a site follows safety regulations. We provide training to students who wish to pursue a career as a safety professional. Following the successful completion of our course, students apply for their construction officer, uh, construction safety officer certificate by registering with the ASTTBC. And I come to my last slide right now. And I added this slide in just to share with you um, in case you're interested in a career in trades, um, if you're interested in career and trades, because I want to show you a few additional pathways, pathways to pursue. Your education can continue into management, supervision, estimating, operations, and more if you like. BCIT is one of the few educational institutions in Canada offering a bachelor's degree in construction, manage, construction management. And construction management was one of the first bachelor's degrees we had at BCIT. This is a de degree completion and there's ways to ladder into this program, even from a, a trade. Applicants um, can also um, apply for the CIQS, and this is an accredited program that meets educational requirements for a professional quantity surveyor. And you can learn more about the construction management by joining the info session on November 3rd. And our construction drawings, construction estimating, construction operations, and construction supervision are all examples of part-time programs that help serve the need of our construction industry. Ah, I can take a breath. Thank you for listening. I wish you all the best in finding your career path or paths. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message or chat. Thank you for that, uh, Verita. Uh, I can see our program advising helpers are answering all of our questions. I don't see any of them hang any questions hanging there. So, with that, I would like to advance the next slide, and I'm going to ask Steve Perry from the School of Transportation to take the wheel and let us know about some of the programs within his sector. You're on, Steve. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, hello, everyone. So I am Steve Perry, Associate Dean for Motive Power. Uh, I'm also a Red Seal auto mechanic, and it's my pleasure to present some School of Transportation programs to you this evening. Transportation is, yeah, thank you. Transportation is critical for the goods and services we all rely upon. The programs we'll discuss are vital to keep us, keeping us commuting or traveling. All of the vehicles and transit options fully serviced and operational and for the safe delivery of the goods and products we all need. So tonight we're gonna go through a few of our programs. Automotive as an example, is one of the top 10 trades in demand. Auto service technicians use test equipment and technical charts to repair, service and repair vehicles. As an auto technician, you will diagnose and repair defective parts, perform various vehicle servicing and repairs on mechanical, electrical, and electronics through the vehicle. You could find work in a dealership, a private repair shop, or in a fleet operation. Now we have several pathways for you to enter automotive. And from previous information sessions, I find this is where it's the most confusing for students. 
So I'll go through them in detail, well, somewhat detail. The generic foundation program. Foundation program is a 30-week entry-level program. So this is for people that do not have any experience in automotive. Provides general training for all makes and models of light-duty vehicles up to uh, up to about a one-ton truck from cars, trucks, pickup trucks, all that kind of good stuff. You receive all of the level one apprentice content in this program. Things like brakes, steering, suspension, electrical, welding, and vehicle maintenance. And you'll also receive level one apprenticeship technical training and automotive technician and completion of the program. You would then find an employer and work for three more years towards earning your red seal as an automotive service technician. Next, we have a 32-week Toyota option. This is the same 30-week curriculum as the generic program. However, there's a focus on using Toyota cars and diagnostic equipment. The extra two weeks is for a, work, a workplace practicum. The program also includes specialty courses needed for working at a Toyota dealership. We do use other vehicles as well in the program. It's not just Toyotas, but the Toyota dealers have heavily supported this program with products and equipment for students to work on. So you come out of the program not only understanding the basic automotive concepts and, and uh, systems, but you have a, a quite an in-depth knowledge of the Toyota product. If Honda and Acuras are more your style, there's also a program for you. So again, a 32-week program, 30 weeks of curriculum and two weeks of uh, workplace practicum. Same generic foundation outcomes, but we focus on using Honda cars and dealer equipment. This is all supported heavily by the dealers of BC. Next is our two-year auto service technician diploma program, which is a co-op model. This program includes all four levels of apprenticeship training, plus it includes some applied academic courses like service administration, customer service skills, and service management. This program includes two co-op periods. These are paid workplace uh, periods, each 22 weeks long. These allow you to gain some industry experience while you're still in school. And many of our students gain permanent employment from their co-op experiences. So picking the right co-op can all make all the difference. We have an industry that will only hire BCIT co-op graduates. So that's a great one for you. Graduates of this program often rise to positions of shop supervisor, service manager, or many even start their own service and repair facilities. Now, the Ford Asset Diploma Program has the same outcomes as the generic diploma model, but includes access to Ford vehicles, trucks and cars, tools and specialty courses needed for Ford dealer technicians. This program is supported by Ford of Canada. And all of these programs lead directly through to the apprenticeship system. So when you graduate any of these programs, you go to work in a shop and then you return to school for your next periods of training. Then you get to write your interprovincial exam for your red seal and be just like me. For more in-depth information on any of these programs, please attend the program information session listed on the slide. Next slide, please. How about auto collision and refinishing? Have you ever considered this as a career path? The auto collision industry is always growing and needs technicians as well. You can work in collision repair, which includes using equipment to straighten car and truck frames, replacing body panels, performing metal repair using plastic fillers, and a lot of bodymen also apply their own top coats like primers. Or you could be an auto refinisher also doing top coating and primers, but they do the actual preparation for final paint jobs, applying paints and clear coats, polishing vehicles, and doing paint repair. Some students go on to do car customization through bodywork and also do custom finishes and paint jobs. Auto Collision Foundation is 42 weeks long, including a two-week practicum at an industry shop. This is a three-year apprenticeship program. And in our program, You'll receive all three levels of your apprenticeship training while you're in this program. Auto Refinish Foundation is a 28-week uh, uh, program, including a two-week practicum, work practicum as well. This is a two-year apprenticeship, and in this program, you'll receive first and second level of painter uh, training, which means you have all of your apprenticeship. Uh, training. When you finish either of these programs, you do not need to return to school for additional apprenticeship training. You've already got it all. You need to continue working in the trade until you've completed all of your time in trade 
You work with your employer to get signed off and recommended to write your red seal. So once you write your uh, certification exam or your red seal, you're going to be certified. For those already working in the auto collision and finishing trade, you can also directly enter through our apprenticeship intakes. All right, next slide, please. Oh, sorry, there was an information session. Uh, it's the same one with automotive. Automotive and auto collision are co the contents covered in the same info session. So tune into that, please. Next slide, please. And how about motorcycle? Have you ever thought of being a motorcycle technician? So in BC, it's called motorcycle and power equipment technician. So in, we've combined motorcycle and outdoor power equipment into one program because there's a lot of overlap of technical content in terms of the topics. Now, the application is different. Whether you're working on a Harley or a lawnmower, it's quite different. But a lot of the hand skills and the topics and the theory of operation is very similar. But of course, the application is vastly different. So we have a 20-week foundation program where we work on motorcycles, ATVs, side-by-sides, chainsaws, and small gardening equipment like lawn tractors and small utility tractors. You'll be performing all of the apprenticeship level one outcomes in this program. And at the end of it, you receive level one technical training from the ITA plus 300 hours towards your time in trade. This is a four-year apprenticeship. Once you finish this program and find employment, you would return for training once per year for the next three years for levels two, three, and four of your apprenticeship program. Again, if you're working in the industry, you can come directly through one of our apprenticeship intakes. For more in-depth information, please look at the slide. Uh, there are different dates for, or there's a different information session for motorcycle and power equipment. Next slide, please. All right, heavy mechanical trades. This is a program area that I'm currently working with. Um, in BC, the heavy mechanical trades include heavy duty equipment technician, truck transport mechanic, transport trailer technician, and diesel engine mechanics. So they took all four of those trades and they found there was a lot of overlap in the content. So what they did, what the ITA did was combine the first three levels of apprenticeship training to be the same. So we call those common core. So there's three common core levels of apprenticeship training. So levels one, two, and three. For, for level four heavy duty and level four commercial transport or truck transport mechanic, there's separate uh, programs for you to complete. In terms of employment outcomes, think of uh, truck and transport trailer content, including things like Semi-trucks, buses, and large delivery trucks typically found on city roads. So commercial transport or truck transport is things with license plates. Heavy-duty equipment, think, think of things that are typically found off-road, like in construction equipment, mining and forester equipment, and, of course, diesel engines, which you will find in all of these sectors. Diesel engines can also be found in marine applications and power generation plants. And if you've ever wanted to see a 10,000 horsepower diesel engine, pop over to our campus and I'd be happy to show it to you. It's, uh, it's 31 feet long. It's the largest engine I've ever seen. These are really diverse fields, and you could be working in service and repair shops. You could go into city or fleet garages. You could work at manufacturer dealerships, or you could find yourself working on the side of a mountain or in a mining camp. You know, there's so many options. The Heavy Mechanical Trades Foundation program provides the base for your career in all four trades. So this 36-week pro program, you take it, you receive level one technical training in four trades. So truck transport, heavy duty, diesel engine, and transport trailer. Uh, when you complete the program, you get to choose what pathway you go on. So content you'd find in the foundation program includes things like air brakes, steering, suspension, electrical, hydraulics, welding, of course, equipment operation, and occupational skills. The heavy duty truck technology diploma is our next option. This is a new program we have just um, added to our, uh, our offering, and the first intake is January 2021, and I do still have seats available. So, 
It's a two-year program and it includes all of the foundation outcomes, but it also includes apprenticeship level two and three outcomes, plus some additional advanced courses, things like fuel cells and electric trucks. We actually have a fully electric truck drive system, and that's one of the training aids you would be working with. Uh, we're also working with autonomous control, which you'll find in agriculture, mining, and truck applications. This program is great for those of you that have some mechanical experience as the information is provided to you at a faster rate of content than the heavy mechanical foundation program, but it's not given to you as fast as the apprenticeship program. So if you have some experience, you may want to consider the diploma option. And, and if you're already working, you've got a job and you're out in industry, you can go direct into our apprenticeship training to complete your way through to your Red Seal. Again, there's an information session listed on the slide. Please join me and our department heads on that evening to provide a lot more information about the career pathways and the content of these programs. Next slide, please. All right, uh, this is our aerospace technology campus, a couple of programs I'd like to mention. If you have any questions about these programs in particular, Cheryl Cahill, our department head, is on the line answering questions. So please type questions. Uh, Cheryl knows the, the programs in much more detail than I ever would. So I'll just give you a bit of an overview. Flight operations. The aviation industry is a very diverse uh, employer but there is an aging workforce and a lot of opportunity ahead. Our school has diplomas in flight operations, one for fixed wing aircraft and one for rotary, meaning helicopters. These diploma programs provide the ground school training courses you need to be successful. Plus they include aircraft training and licensing with a certified flight instructor. There are pre and post flight lessons and all of this content leads to Transport Canada certification. So if you get through these programs, you are licensed to fly. We accept domestic and international applicants into both of these options. So the training is conducted at our Richmond Aerospace Technology Campus with fixed wing training also provided at the Pacific Flying Club, one of our partners located at the Boundary Bay Airport in Delta, and Rotary Flight Operations Program you know, with a partner called Chinook Helicopters located at the Abbotsford Airport. The fixed wing program is 64 weeks long and the Rotary program is 57 weeks. Both of these programs are full-time programs, so you need to be fully uh, committed uh, for this. Now, all of our mechanical programs in automotive and heavy mechanical and collision and painting, you'll find used in airport operations in the airline industry, often as the ground equipment service and repair specialist, something I actually did for five years before transitioning to automotive and truck repair. So our whole uh, transportation school is here to provide from pre or entry level training all the way through to, uh, to earning your wings. So please uh, take a look at the information session uh, date listed on the uh, slide. Next slide, please. And our school also has a technology management program. This is a Bachelor of Technology degree. So this is a pathway that which can follow graduation of any of our programs and often many other programs within BCIT through School of Business and other schools. As you progress through your career, the technology management program enables technical professionals to continue to work while acquiring knowledge needed to transition from roles as technical specialists to leadership and management. Courses in the program are offered via part-time studies within a classroom or very much what we're doing right now through online delivery models, virtual delivery. The technology management program will appeal to technologists, technicians, and technical specialists who work in applied science, technology, or trade fields. Establish business and management strategies within a technical environment and then earn your degree while working. So a lot of times our programs, are, our foundation programs are a certificate, which is half of a diploma. Our diploma programs are halfway to a degree. The technology management program is a way for you to complete your degree pathway. So all of our trades programs at BCIT have this laddering effect and pathway into continuous learning. So if you progress through your career and you want to move up through an organization, we have a solution for you. Uh, next slide, please. 
So I am now, that's the end of uh, the presentation for our school. I'll stay on the line, of course, for question and answer, and I'll jump into the Q&A uh, um, chat line. Um, but I would like to turn it back to uh, Tamara, I believe. Thanks so much, Steve. And I also want to again thank Marco, Marita, Steve. I want to also remind you that we have Cheryl from our aerospace campus online with us to answer any questions you may have about uh, aerospace trades or training that we offer. I'm also very grateful that each uh, of the presenters, Marco, Marita, and Steve, uh, made mention of the transferability of the skills that we have as tradespeople towards other viable careers and uh, such as diplomas and degrees. Uh, also, let's talk a little bit about this watch and win contest. So because you've registered and attended Big Info, you're going to receive an email in the next few days. Um, and that will, when you complete this survey, that will put you in the running for an opportunity for a chance to win a $1,000 tuition prize. Prize draws will be made uh, January 6, 2021, and the winners will be contacted for, by BCIT Marketing. Um, I'll have you go to the next slide, please. So we also want to remind you that there's more ways to uh, learn more about BCIT and what we've been doing to prepare for the pandemic and what, what our training looks like. So please visit bcit.ca experience. I'll also uh, remind you of a couple more um, links on our BCIT website, and that is uh, bcit.ca slash info sessions to be able to book an information session. And again, I thank Marito, Marita, Marco, and Steve for making mention of the upcoming information sessions that they have in each of their schools. Also, check the web, bcit.ca, for more in-depth information about programs specifically, start dates, um, uh, also the program requirements, course content. And if I could go to the next slide, please. Uh, Marita, can I get you to speak to this one? Thanks, Tamara. Hi, everyone. I'm back to share one more important slide. Uh, special thanks to, to, to Carolyn Taylor for sharing this with us. Uh, Prospero Credit Union is a proud partner with BCIT Alumni Association. This is an excellent pro program to help eligible apprenticeship students bridge the financial gap. There is a wait for the start of employment insurance benefits between taking leave from their job from your job and being accepted to BCIT. This financial support package provides much needed financial options for trade students wanting to complete their apprenticeship training by reducing financial stress. So this program can help relieve that financial stress so you can focus on your studies. Back to you, Tamara. Thank you. Uh, so we do have some time for some questions. Uh, I'll remind you again, if you want to uh, go to your chat icon on the bottom bar there, you can type in a question. And I have to thank the folks in program advising because they have been right on top of these questions. I can see that uh, throughout the evening, they've answered over nearly 120 questions so far. And if you have anything specific, feel free to uh, send in that question now. Um, I have a question here specific for airline and flight operations. So this gives me an opportunity to introduce Cheryl Cahill. And Cheryl, if you can see the question that's on the Q&A list, I'm not sure if it's still there or someone's answering it um, in, in, in person privately, or uh, do you want to answer it live in front of us? Um, I'm happy to answer it live if you like, Tamara. I'm on the Q&A as well. And I did just answer a question about high school. So I think maybe I've taken care of it. Um, how about, here's one for Steve. I'll share this one with you, Steve. It says, I'm taking a train and trades program at Centennial for automotive. Will that lead to, into uh, more a diploma or, and then I lost the questions. Th that's how quick our folks at program advising are. They're grabbing those questions right away. 
I'm sorry, I just answered that and hit enter as you started to read it. So yeah, a lot of our high school programs uh, may have, an, there might be an ACIT program, which will have level one apprenticeship outcomes in it. And uh, if that's the case, then our foundation program would be redundant to a lot of the content you already learned. So the diploma program would be uh, probably the best option for you if you've already done an ACIT. You know you're going to be successful and you know you've got the hand skills, uh, the diploma models are delivered at a faster rate of content than foundation programs across the board and the range of our programs. So if you've done an ASIC program or a high school automotive program, the diploma route might be your best option. I hope that helps. Thanks, Steve. Um, I have to say that the um, program advisors are real quick typers and they've been great at getting these um, questions answered right away. Um, I don't. Oh, one. You're up, Marco. Thank you. Um, I was just, uh, there was a question here about the booking of information sessions, whether or not it was one-on-one -on -one or registration for a pre-ranged one. So the information sessions that I've set up for my program areas, and I'm, I'm only going to speak to mine as I'm, I'm thinking they're probably the same as everybody else's. But what I have done is I've set up information sessions with our faculty uh, program heads or department heads, and we will be there to specifically answer those questions in a Zoom session such as this. And uh, it will be really specific to the program. So we'll be able to go more in depth. We'll be able to really answer the questions in terms of everything from entrance requirements to um, careers and, and job expectations. So um, it will be specific that way. And it will be an area, uh, an opportunity where you'll be able to ask the, ask the questions. And I will be helping to facilitate those questions in this way, where I read the chat box and we actually answer the questions live. So I wanted to just throw it out to uh, one of the questions that was out there. Thanks, Marco. Uh, I see another one here for a aircraft maintenance engineer. Um, and it says, I joined a bit late for AME engineer high school applicant. When's the admissions date? And is it first come first serve? Uh, so I'll, uh, I'd just like to mention uh, for AME, we have a continuous intake model like Tamara talked about. So there isn't just a certain term where we're admitting students, but to your point, it is a first come first serve process. So the first person that meets all of the entrance requirements and all the documentation is submitted and tuition is paid, you would be admitted first. So I, I believe we were uh, admitting students as quickly as every eight weeks into that program. So you would need to uh, jump on to their website or join them for an information session. If, if you'd like a, a better answer, please email me, sperryfbcit.ca, and I'll be happy to find that out and uh, provide it to you. Thanks, Steve. Here's another great one for you. It says, would the ACE, ACE, I'm thinking maybe, oh, ACE it, be able to give me credit or partial credits for the heavy duty path? So unfortunately, unfortunately, the automotive path does not have any cross credit into heavy mechanical. It's something that I believe should be an auto mechanic and working in heavy mechanical trades. I know the overlap, but right now there is no, um, no exact crossover or cross credit from an ACIT, which is a level of one apprentice outcome in automotive, to a foundation program. Part of that is because the heavy mechanical trades are so heavy on safety. And in the heavy mechanical trades level one, you've got a lot of things like very in-depth hydraulics and air brakes, things that you wouldn't see in automotive. So I would suggest that you would do extremely well coming into the heavy mechanical trades, but unfortunately there would not be any time credit. I just know your GPA would be amazing. Okay. Um I'll just ask Marco or um, Marita if you see any questions here that you want to jump in and grab. Sorry, Tamara, there is a question that perhaps uh, you might know uh, how to answer this. Are there any special incentives for women entering the trades? Um, that's a really tough question for BCIT right now. Um, but the Industry Training Authority uh, does have 
a uh, great website and they have some other programs throughout the province that can offer some opportunities. I'd also point you to a tremendous group called uh, the BC Center for Women in Trades, B-C-C-W-I-T-T, BC Center for Women in the Trades. And this is a network o- ne- networking opportunity to meet other tradeswomen and also to get some pointers. They have a Facebook page, so I would definitely tap into that. Okay, any other questions? Uh, there's a question here about trades discovery that says trades discovery is not being offered. I'd like to enter a trades program, but I'm not exactly sure which one. Uh, trades discovery has been put on a pause so that we could help all of the other program areas do all of the um, setting up of their shops to be able to take care of the backlog of students that were, that were um, halted in their training in the early spring. We're now getting caught up. We're, we're falling into a little more of a schedule. We're starting to see opportunities where we can start to schedule trades exploration. But um, uh, it means that I need to schedule with uh, five, four different campuses and 10 or more different departments to find those tiny little areas where we can sneak in. Uh, we started scheduling now. We're not sure what it's going to look like, but we're hopeful that we'll resume again in January. And that means that the people that were on pause that were already accepted into the program will have a uh, right of first refusal before we accept anybody um, for that spot. Thanks for that, Tamara. I know that I've had questions and people ask me about that as well. So thank you. You're welcome. So uh, I see we're getting down to the um, one more question. Uh, Cheryl, maybe you want to grab that one. It says, if you're class one medical requirements for the airline ops, uh, I think you're already answered that one, but maybe you could share the question and answer with us. Sure. So with the uh, Canadian Aviation Medical Examination, very, very important to have that done ahead of time because what you want to avoid is determining uh, or finding out if you have some kind of medical condition that will preclude you from being a pilot. Um, you know, first of all, that's really critical because you have to maintain a category one medical throughout your career. So we do recommend that you have it done well in advance of the closing date. However, if uh, Transport Canada is working very hard right now and due to the pandemic, they've really ramped up the processing, although it is still a bit tricky. Uh, they're trying to verify regular pilots um, that fly airplanes for commercial purposes first. However, um, if you can provide evidence that your medical is in motion, in other words, you've submitted all the required documentation and it's just a matter of processing, then we would uh, review that file and it's very likely going to um, permit you the opportunity to be interviewed. But um, it is really important to try to get that um, going as quickly as possible because it's uh, critical to your future. Uh, I had a question here that someone has asked about mechanical reasoning assessments. Uh, Some of our trades training programs have uh, requirements beyond a high school transcript and that some of them are things like refrigeration, some of the mechanics trades, um, uh, aviation, aircraft maintenance engineer also has a um, co-requisite of a mechanical aptitude test. And those assessments are a requirement to complete your application. So we recommend that you gather all your requirements, your transcripts and your assessment results, and so that you have those available to upload onto your application so that when you do apply for your training, everything's all in line, and uh, then you can um, move that process much smoother. All right, I'd like to jump in and uh, answer a question. Uh, so uh, Sean's asking about applying for the truck transport mechanic for fall of 2021. If you mean the diploma program, it's open for registration for January 2021. If you mean the Heavy Mechanical Trades Foundation program, we have a two-year wait list, so I'd encourage you to apply very soon. When I say a two-year wait list, sometimes when we're inviting students to come to school that are on a wait list, they might say, you know what, can you skip me this time? Um, 
life work and things are in the way, I'd like to come back at a later date. So although I have enough people on the list for two years, it may not take two years to get in. So if you're looking for the foundation program, please apply soon so that we have you on the list. I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Steve. Okay, so I, there's a question here about getting a mechanical aptitude assessment when they have zero experience. So a mechanical reasoning test isn't about mechanics. Well, it's kind of like mechanics. Basically what it is, is it's a, a measure of your mechanical aptitude. And it's not something that you can really cram for. It's something that you build as you're uh, let going through life and experiencing and noticing how things work. Uh, an example might be if you were a little kid and someone showed you how to ride a bicycle. At some point, maybe that bike chain fell off. And after they had put it on for you several times, at some point, they showed you how to put that chain on your bicycle. The act of learning how to put that chain on your bicycle and knowing how that gear kind of worked is building a mechanical aptitude. And we gain that in how we observe things in everyday life. Um, those mechanical um, reasoning tests are offered through uh, BCIT Trades Assessment, and you need to book an appointment. And uh, for each of those, the mechanical assessment, there is a minimum passing grade, and all of the passing grades for each of the different um, assessment tests that we offer uh, vary by program. And so we don't advertise what the pass scores are. We want you to come in and just do your very best. Um, but they do range depending on the trade that you're writing for. Um, any, so let's see, um, Marita, maybe you can answer this one. It says, I'm taking the electrical ACIT program. When be, would be a good time to apply to BCIT? Hey, thanks. You know, because you've taken the ACIT, you're in advanced standing. So um, it's good for you to also to make your application as soon as possible because our intakes vary as well too. We have multiple intakes through the whole year for electrical. So as soon as you are able to do it, uh, please apply. Thank you, Marita. So I just want to recap a few more things. Uh, please check out uh, BCIT information session for any of the program specifics that you may want to learn more in-depth information. And that's bcit.ca slash info sessions. Also, there is the um, watch and win uh, survey that will be coming to your inbox. Uh, Please fill in the survey, and that is your application or your entry for $1,000 tuition. Uh, if you want to continue to send your questions via the chat, uh, we'll stick around uh, as well as program advising. And I thank you very much. I think next slide, please. Is there another slide? We want to thank you. And so on behalf of Steve, Marco, and Marita, and everybody here at BCIT, thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to learn more about the programs that we offer. Thanks very much. And we're going to sign off early.